Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next instalment in Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight webinar series. Uh, my name is Paul, and I'm here today to talk about a, uh, an update on the stay at home stocks and work from home stocks. Uh, it's a fascinating subject, very relevant to the, uh, the the world and lives that we lead at the moment based on what's gone on this uh, this particular year uh, and uh, quite, a, quite a sort of, you know, broad subject, subject that we could uh, talk about for uh, for days, to be truthful. But uh, as always, we have our own little time restriction uh, here. But hopefully it's found it uh, uh, interesting. You know, we here at Admiral Markets, we recognise that it's been a rather tumultuous year. Um, we hope that you're all safe and well, wherever you may find yourself. Uh, uh, perhaps you've been trading and investing in some of the uh, relevant stocks. If you have, it would be great to hear what particular stocks you've been fascinated by, what particular equities that have uh, caught your uh, attention. Uh, alternatively, we appreciate that you know you might be completely new to sort of trading, investing, and still trying to just understand the most basic of concepts, and and that's absolutely fine. You'll find that the Trading Spotlight webinar series has a has a broad range of topics from myself and my colleagues that cover all aspects of trading and investing, uh, and I hope that you'll be able to make use of them, okay, and help them uh, guide you on your own particular journey but as i said if there are any particular equities that have caught your eye this year great put them in because what we'll do is we've got time at the end we'll put them up there we'll go and have a look at the live charts and see what's been going on so be sure to uh, to stay with us for the uh, for the journey ladies and gentlemen so what we'll talk about today is you know how have certain stocks feared during this year of lockdowns it's been a uh, you know, unprecedented year, okay, a year that a year that that word unprecedented has, has been overused, but you know, I think it's fair based upon you know what we've all experienced, okay, regardless of what part of the uh, the world you're in, no uh, no sort of nation has not been touched by that, and of course, then that means that it has had knock on impacts into uh, um, financial markets, uh, and we'll talk about you know which ones have surprised us and why, and and I'll probably give you some of my own personal uh, ideas and thoughts on that, okay, then as I say, they they are my personal thoughts and ideas. Um, I don't consider myself an equity specialist per se. Okay. Although I trade, you know, I, uh, you know, I trade quite a lot of uh, instruments, um, you know, but nevertheless, you know, there are still equities that have basically leapt off the page in terms of providing either opportunity or have risen to the sort of, uh, to the sort of forefront of media coverage. Uh, and we'll touch upon, you know, ones that might still hold their interest in 2021, which is a, um, you know, that's, you know, that's kind of a, we're going to be having to have a little bit of a crystal ball, aren't we? Okay. That as we talk through about what we might see the world be, in like in 2021 and how that will have a particular knock-on impact uh, for for uh, for all markets not just equity markets uh, for those of you who don't know me my name is paul I, you know, i've traded for many years uh, as i said primarily i've traded fx indices and commodities that's that's where i would consider my particular specialities are um, but you know it, it's a case of you know when you're looking at equities it's a case of you know you have to trade what you see and a chart is a chart is a chart in 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 many respects okay so uh, primarily when i'm uh, trading uh, uh, dominant trends okay uh, you know I, I like to do that for my swing and longer term positions uh, and basically for my intraday trading i tend to focus on reversals and uh, a mean reversion. Uh, and as you can see, you know, we're here, Admiral Markets, okay, uh, sort of truly uh, a global global brokerage there that is licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most uh, popular trading products uh, and allowing you the ability to uh, engage with markets using both MT4 and MT5. Uh, and if you have any questions about Admiral Markets, please get in touch with the account representative uh, and they'll be very happy to help guide you. But, you know, as I said, we're here to do a, a little bit of an update on the uh, a little bit of an update on, you know, stay at home stocks and work from home stocks. OK, so um, uh, you know, as the slide says there, you know, we've experienced an unprecedented year. All right. Which turned many assumptions and ways of living totally on their heads, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, not unsurprisingly, this has also had an impact upon stock markets in both good and bad ways. Uh, there were some stocks that thrived uh, and some that uh, really failed. So in this session, we'll look at some of the stocks that have soared during lockdown, some that have failed, and try to see what we can learn from this uh, tumultuous uh, year. So, you know, as we said, it, it's, uh, you know... It, you know, it's turned many assumptions on the head what's going on this year, and, and it's changed the way of living and working 
you probably don't need me to tell you that you've you've lived through it you've experienced it it's more about the kind of consequences in terms of well how has that had a knock-on impact on uh, financial markets you know and how that has that affected trading and investing and simply you know where were the threats and where were the opportunities and so that's what we will uh, that's what we'll have a little look at and we'll talk at there okay and uh, uh, peter said you know in his own experience he had some um, uh, great result with marston's brewery uh, and but and not bad uh, with uh, with rolls royce okay so the rolls royce one is of interest we could look at that because we'll talk about that in a slide or two um great result with marston's brewery well done there peter okay everybody's drinking more beer during lockdown you're stuck at home there's nowhere to go the pubs are closed you know what's uh, what what are you going to do but uh, reach for a, reach for a beer okay so uh, um so yeah that's uh, that was probably a smart move for you there peter well done i'm pleased that it uh, that it worked out both uh, 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 financially uh, and also as a yeah, coping mechanism for for being locked down for months on um, for months on end so <laughs> So, you know, for, for those of you who've been trading for a while, okay, or those of you who've been trading before the, the start of uh, uh, the sort of COVID lockdown, uh, those of you will remember that, you know, we saw stock markets collapse from February to, to March, okay, as COVID fears overwhelmed the markets. Um, you know, and, and, and this was the fascinating thing for myself personally. OK, is that um, COVID had been around for a few months beforehand, right? COVID had started, you know, sort of showing its head, sort of, you know, kind of October, November and December. And as a trader, the, the thing that shocked me is that it took so long for markets to actually react to, to COVID. And it was, as I said, it wasn't until this sort of kind of, uh, I think it was kind of midway through February, into February, and then into March, that we had a, a real sort of uh, understanding and acceptance of what was going on, okay, and actually how big a problem this was going to be, not just regionally at, at the start in in, uh, in China, but actually it was it was touching every aspect of the uh, of the world, okay, and we saw, you know, the markets absolutely collapse. All right, and if like me, you're, a, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a generally a shorting trader. You're generally a bit of a, a like to sort of a, be a bet. It was a great opportunity, okay, to to trade with that as those fears overwhelm the markets. But unsurprisingly, all right, certain stocks and sectors did worse than others based on the damage that was projected from lockdown. And you know, and it's it's just a little bit of common sense really okay you know if you th think about it you know one of them there was aviation okay is um it's basically we shut down all the flights okay you know everybody was stopping going on holiday business travel was uh curtailed uh, and basically literally countries closed their airspace or countries you know basically closed off flights inbound from other countries okay so there was just a, an immediate uh, ripple effect throughout the aviation sector as a total uh, and what we'll do is we'll look at you know we'll look at the sector but we'll also we'll look at one or two of maybe the specific elements because you know they just went from bad to even to even worse we also have things like commercial property okay you know and and i can talk about this from my own personal experience you know i had a, an office in the uh, in the local in the local city and you know in, in the march time okay as soon as it looked like we were going into lockdown um, i basically closed my uh, office down and and retreated home okay because i figured that was where it was going to happen it was moving before lockdown was coming we could see it was uh, it was coming but of course then that had a huge impact on commercial property companies who effectively had either companies like mine closing down retreating home or other companies that were just going out of business because of they've been hit so hard by what was happening during the uh, the covid crash we also saw bricks and mortars retailers all right so you know it's sort of going to the to the high street to, to to buy stuff going to your local city okay just to you know buy whatever it is whether it be tech or clothes okay or cars or even you know th they all had a you know an absolute sort of just it was like a domino effect effectively the price just collapsed away and collapsed away uh, rapidly the automobile sector took took hit as well everybody's working from home so you know what why would you need to buy a car you know why unless you were uh, you know, unless you had to trade in your kind of company car, there was not really much in a driver of way for people wanting to 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 to, to buy cars. Okay, you know, you, you're going to have six months of the year of not being able to go anywhere. Was there really, a, you know, was there really a, a need? Uh, and then also the financial companies. Okay, financial companies, you know, across that whole sector. You know, not just from like banks, but uh, fintech companies. Okay, to funds, etc. To to even some of the other elements of the ecosystems, like you know, just the the kind of law firms, the uh, accountancy firms that feed into that whole financial sector and they all started to, to take hits uh, once again as either companies sort of downsized or companies collapsed or invariably their share price was hit just because the whole sector was uh, particularly uh, collapsing. So, you know, it, it, as I said, there was some, you know, 
the, the, all of the market took a big hit. All sectors took a pretty pretty solid whack. But of course, some of them were worse because they were uh, kind of finely tuned to what was happening, you know, and 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 the effect that COVID would have on that. Okay, and so, you know, um, for me, you know, uh, you know, as a, as a personal thing, you know, it's sort of at the start, at the end of January, start of February, you know, I I put my pension into cash. Okay, I managed my own pension. I put my pension into cash because I, I could see something was coming, but I I didn't really know, and I was a little bit nervous, and I decided to to just sit on the sidelines and that actually was very fortunate for myself because we could see what happened during February March and it just was like a, as I said like an absolute domino okay and it absolutely clattered and you know some people were able to do exceptionally well sort of shorting those markets okay and if you uh, if you were able to short those markets well done to you okay they were uh, they were uh, quite uh, quite uh, you know enjoyable times if you're uh, if you're a, an equity shorter or okay an equity bear so, you know, um, what we'll do is we'll look at a couple of the, the charts of the areas around that. So, so this is what's called VNQ. OK, this is a chart for uh, Vanguard, big fund company. OK, and effectively that this is an ETF, an exchange traded fund. If you want to understand more about what an ETF is and how it might be different from uh, from either other funds or other instruments. Well, then, if you look in the Admiral Markets webinar archive for Trading Spotlight, I think a couple of my colleagues, Marcus and Jens, have done webinars on actually what an ETF is there. And they're there and you can sort of tap into them uh, and learn more about it. What we're really just looking at here as, as, a, as an instrument, and if I just bring up the old drawing tool here, as you can see, um, you can see that, you know, this is a, you know, just basically effectively reflecting the uh, the entire sort of, you know, kind of Vanguard's take on, on the real estate. And the ETF is made up of uh, lots of different and effective um, uh, constituent parts attached to property that went into it. And so, uh, as I always say every week, ladies and gentlemen, I am a, uh, I'm a better trader than I'm an artist. So please uh, forgive me with my uh, drawing tools here. Okay. That's um, it's uh, far from ideal, but you get the gist. Okay. You know, you can see there, and this is a, this is a, a weekly chart. You can see that all the way through kind of 2019 to the start of 2020, we were in a very, very nice uptrend and you can, you can probably already work out yourself. Okay. Where that kind of, covid crash happened as i said coming from kind of february into march and you can see for yourself you know what an absolute you know what an absolute collapse that uh, was in terms of you know the the overall price of that and it wouldn't probably be much of a shock we were literally just under 100 okay and you can see we collapsed down to about 55 so you know in a, in a matter of weeks we we kind of almost lost like 50 percent all right of that of that funds value okay it was just um, quite something and you can see that, it, yes, it has come back, okay? And when I put this chart together a couple of weeks ago, there we go, we were trading back up to about 85. But, you know, it's certainly not, uh, it's not as sprightly, okay, as what we have seen with other particular uh, uh, instruments and stocks. And it's kind of lagged a bit. Why? Well, because it's not really a surprise, okay? Real estate, all right, is a case of, it's only now we're starting to see just hints and slivers of people going back to, to, to buying houses, okay? Buying buying property, okay? And, and actually being able, being able to go out, builders being able to go out and complete on properties, okay? So, you know, that just had like a knock-on info. We saw, a, you know, a run-up in the year before and then an absolute collapse. And whilst we have seen prices nudge their way back, it has not been anyway in terms of, you know, anywhere near as good as we will see in other particular stocks. It was a real kind of old school real estate got hit hard and has taken its time to actually to sort of return to sort of any any sense of normality in the actual um, in the actual instrument itself. You know, and as we said, uh, you know, earlier, aviation, okay, aviation took a, a big hit. And, and this is, once again, it's an exchange traded fund that focuses primarily on the aviation sector. It's called JETS, it's all right, it's ticker is J-E-T-S, very uh, apt, you would say. Uh, and you can see that, you know, the aviation sector, you know, wasn't exactly sort of uh, um, firing on all cylinders, shall we say, through sort of the last few years. But uh, you can, you know, it's actually pretty much in a range there, the ETF between uh, about 28 and 34, okay, so a $6 range for a good few years. But, uh, you know, you, you can see for yourself, okay, what happened there, right? Price, those prices collapsed, okay, into what we got, a, you know, and towards the double bottom. So we've gone down from around about 30, okay, $30 down to about $12. And once again, you know, we have come back, okay, and we had a bit of a bounce, and this would have been the first of the uh, the American stimulus deals, which we'll talk about maybe a little bit later, but it's, you know, it's fallen away. What you might see is that actually it's been a little bit of a bump there recently. And if you think about, well, why would that be? Why, what has brought that on? Well, 
what we had a couple of weeks ago was the announcements around the the vaccines for the pandemic for COVID. Okay, and that had a natural impact that people thinking that you know we're going to go back to a version of normal life beforehand. So invariably, those kind of stocks which had been hit, they got a little bit of a particular bump off that, and Jets continues. And you know, Jets has a little bit of strength in it, but once again, you know, it, it's still not anywhere near okay back to where it was beforehand. Okay, these were these you know this was hit hard, and it has it has yet to to uh, it's failed so far to really come back and uh, uh, and you know return to the previous uh, pre-pandemic levels. But you know, on the flip side, some things did do well. All right, you know, and so this is VCR. So once again, this is an ETF, and this is all about consumer discretionary. Okay, so it builds up. Uh, it's made up of you know lots of companies that, not unsurprisingly, are deemed to be sort of you know uh, popular with you know consumers discretionary spending. So I had a little bit of a look, you know, in terms of you know to understand how this particular fund is built up. So this fund, twenty three percent of it is made up of Amazon, has Tesla, has McDonald's, has Nike, has Starbucks, okay, stuff that people will spend money on day to day. All right, so even though there was a uh, a crash, okay, you can see that there was still being money being spent in it, and this is where it starts to get interesting for us, ladies and gentlemen. So you know, once again, this is a weekly chart. The tick is VCR, uh, and you can see from 2019 to the start of 2020, we were in a pretty nice uptrend there, weren't we? Uh, and then invariably, what we saw was, you know, you can see that we had the the actual crash there, okay, you know, and we dropped ourselves there. You know, we we dropped ourselves there from you know around about 200, okay. $200 down to 120, which is, you know, it's a, it's a pretty significant, uh, pretty significant drop, about 40%. But you can see what's happened here, haven't it? From that lows, okay, sort of, you know, in sort of March, uh, April time, you can see that this has been, you know, quite some stellar movement here. We've gone from 120, at, and when I placed this uh, chart in a little while ago, we were up above 260, okay? So uh, that gives us, starts to give us a hint about, well, you know, what were some of the stocks that have done well, okay? You know, what were the what were the ones that have done well? Is that, you know, a case, is a case of, you know, still things like, you know, people still need to get food, okay? People still needed supermarkets if you were delivering online, okay? Ability to deliver online food, okay? Or deliver to actually still do your business or still people wanting to do things. People, people, you know, still, even when they were reopened, people were still going to things like Starbucks and McDonald's, okay? People are buying stuff off Amazon. I'm sure you've done it to yourself, whether you love it or loathe it, okay? People have been using that because that was a tool that allowed people to sort of, you know, cope and get through the the lockdowns and you can see how that was reflected itself in the uh, in the price of that consumer discretionary etf and that's a that is a great chart you know we, we as i said we just looked at charts of things like real estate okay we looked at charts of aviation and and they were just not you know they have just really sort of lagged behind and struggled well you know you can see where the actual all the energy and resources were going can't you Uh, and this is XLF. And so this is an ETF of the financials. Okay, so it's made up of the big banks and other financial uh, financial companies. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty similar story. We can see from the start, you know, in kind of into 2019 to the sort of start of 2020, you can see the price was actually just stepping its way up. Okay, it just, you know, got its way to, to highs before we collapsed there. Okay, and we've collapsed there from around about $31 down to around about, about six eighteen dollars Okay, so it's still a significant, it's not 50% drop, but it's still, you know, it's a good 40% plus drop there. But once again, we can see we, we had that little bump when invariably the, the Americans announced their initial initial sort of uh, um, uh, their initial stimulus package uh, but then prices kind of actually sort of rolled back and, and it just was actually doing nothing you know it was just going in a in a little bit of a range there between 23 and 26 dollars okay so you compare that to what we've just seen on the consumer discretionary you can see where actually the the the, the you know the, the the power was yes we've had a little bit of a bump recently in that why is that that's coming back to the vaccine and and it's it's that vaccine story that has perhaps maybe uh, colored or skewed the vision that we've seen okay in terms of in terms of what's been going on with the uh, with the charts and with all of those particular equities which we which we will look at in the moment but what we have seen is that as you can see there it's you know it, it is grinding its way back up there but it's you know it's certainly not been performing as well as what we've seen in that previous consumer discretionary uh, and some of the some of the equities we will look at in a uh, in a in a in a few slides time so you know 
we just you know, had a little look there, kind of like a couple of some of the sectors, okay, some of the sectors, you know, and how they reacted or how they, you know, how they how they failed or how they actually surged ahead, okay, not only through the start of the crash, but actually how they have responded in their sort of let's say their seven eight months since since that. But what we also saw was that you know we saw some individual stocks do do very very well, okay, and you know not surprisingly, these were stocks that basically you know effectively either facilitated you staying at home, or working from home, or just allowed you to basically live your life at home based upon what you are doing. So we had like Netflix, okay, the the TV streaming, okay, and I'm sure some of you may well be um, may well be you know clients of Netflix, you may well be subscribers to Netflix, and you might think that that has been a fantastic tool to help you during you know being locked up at home. Uh, we also had Tesla, which did well, which is kind of curious and interesting be just because of the nature of it. And I think we might look at a chart of them and we'll talk about them more. We had Apple as well, okay? Apple, and a lot of the, the basis with Apple was actually their streaming service, okay? And the streaming service came online around about the same time. So, of course, in February, that was very popular. I think I don't really need to say too much about Amazon. Okay. You know, literally every man and his dog was buying things from uh, either from or through Amazon, but what's kind of like an interesting one is uh, Peloton, which we'll look at in a moment. Peloton is, you know, it, it's effectively, it's a, it's an online spinning class. Okay. In the sense that you can effectively, you have your little stationary bike at home, but it's connected by Wi-Fi, so you can join online spinning class. And so you can exercise from home, which, you know, uh, as we look at the chart, you know, is uh, kind of a, a you know, uh, that's sort of kind of like a left field idea that came in to uh, to uh, the actual um, kind of looking at stocks that did well, all right, from from being stuck at home. Axon Enterprise, okay, uh, we'll look at them in a moment. You might be aware of who they are, you might not be. We'll look at it, uh, and then also Zoom, okay, online video conferencing, okay, be able to do online calls. You know, we are here on Zoom here today, okay, for our for our session, okay. So not surprisingly, those stocks that basically allowed people to to work from home, to stay at home, to to basically get on with their lives, did very well. All right, that's not really a terrible, probably not really a big shock, is it? Sort of kind of common sense. However, at the time. Lots of people would have been so worried about the, the lockdown, they would have been so worried about trying to get as many toilet rolls as they possibly could, that invariably they may not have had the mental space to work out, well, how can you turn what is a threat into an opportunity for me, okay? And, that, and that's, the, that's the kind of point to sort of take on board there. The kind of longer, deeper point is that, you know, you know, uh, you know lockdown has been... Lockdown has been a, you know, a, a unbelievable experience, okay? It's been a really tumultuous, it's changed things completely for many, many people. But these things happen to all of us in our lives in a way, maybe not to the extent of that, but it's a case of, you know, what, what might be a threat. Part of it is thinking about, well, how could I turn this into an opportunity? How could I take some positivity out of this? How could I turn this into, a, you know, an opportunity to progress myself as a, as a trader and investor? Something for a bit of food for thought for you to take away. So, uh, you know, as we said, there was a lot of, uh, you know, we, we talked earlier about, you know, the kind of the bricks and retail mortars, okay, the, you know, the, the, the big shops in the high street all closed, okay, and they, they really, um, they really struggled, especially ones that did not have an online presence, whereas companies that did have an online presence, okay, they did exceptionally well, okay, we just looked at a bit of consumer discretionary there, but this is another ETF, and it's an ETF that basically focuses on online retailers okay They're effectively companies that derive most of their revenues from selling online and it's called iBuy which is a, is a you know once again it's a very apt ticker okay if you want to uh, if you want to follow let's bring up the old tools let's bring up the old drawing tools here so you know we've got i buy on weeks and you know here we can see and so you know you can see from when this this only came out sort of 2016 2017 or around you know that was around like 24 dollars up to about 52 dollars and you know it had just really been sort of meandering a little bit really for a couple of years but then started to peak out just before the uh, the the kind of covid crash dropped there and it dropped from around about kind of 55 56 down to about 33 um, but then there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You can see for yourself, okay, what actually happened here. There you can see for yourself from lows there at around about 33. Well, you know, when I was just uh, uh, putting this together, okay, a couple of weeks back and moved, you know, we were we were up and above 100. All right, okay, and that is just absolutely astounding maneuver. And this, that is fantastic trajectory. Okay, and it's a case of, you know. <clears throat> You know, one of the, the questions for, for today's webinar was, well, what could we see going into, into 2021? Uh, and I think what we will have seen is that although 
there will be, as the vaccine takes place and, and elements of life return to normal, I'm not entirely convinced we will completely return to the normal we had before, um, undoubtedly there will be, there will be some profit taking, you know, and there will be some focus and energy goes back to those bricks and mortars retailers because after everyone's been locked up, well, they quite like to go shopping just because of the, because of the difference. But I think definitely in terms of online retailers, okay, for lots of people in lots of parts of the countries, lots of part of the country, lots of countries of the world, you know, this will have changed the the, the way of um, of operating and doing, and the way people work. You know, the way you know. If I speak to even think about my um, my my own parents who okay, who basically do their grocery shopping online now. Okay, and that is that's probably the way that will be. There will be an element of them that is always like that now, simply because that is the way we've changed, and that's you know as the, as those retailers. You know, get better at their offerings, okay, and they get better at providing support. Then invariably, that will that will actually happen and occur. So, you know, I you know I have this in my own uh, kind of um, in my own pensions and, and funds, uh, and it's one that I think that will continue, okay, just because we've seen there's a shift, okay, the, the a shift in the way we as humans go about doing our uh, go about doing you know giving, living our lives, doing our business. Uh, and not unsurprisingly, this is uh, Amazon, and you can see for yourself here. You know, Amazon has you know has, has been a juggernaut, okay. Um, and what we had was we had a little bit of a you know top up before it didn't drop as much, okay. Remember when we looked at some of those uh, funds earlier, some of those stocks, you know, they had real drops of you know 40, 50, even percent more than that. Amazon didn't drop because people recognised already that you know if everyone was getting locked down, people would be buying you know from you know from Amazon stores. Yeah, and we can see that you know we were still held above sixteen hundred, but you can see for yourself, okay, in terms of what to come, you know, we, the price almost doubled, right, from sixteen hundred up to thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-five hundred, okay, and that is just uh, this is the weekly chart, and, you know, once again, that is you know still quite some outstanding sort of you know maneuvers and such, uh, and and I see this at the moment, and we'll we'll have a look at the latest chart early on, but you know personally I see. Um, let me just get rid of these. Um, I personally see that that is now. I I'd see that as basically it's coiling up there now. Okay, that's it's it's coiling up. Okay, it's it's had its great run. It's coiling up, and and we'll look at a few charts like that in a uh, in a moment. Uh, and now I'm thinking, you know, it's a case of we're waiting. Okay, is is this is this going to be Amazon come off because actually sales will reduce because actually people will go back to to buying on the high street, or, or is this just you know another step before we get a, another move in terms of you know another shift towards kind of a online retailing? Okay, so it's it's had a great run, and at the moment I see that now is just it's just going sideways it's just coiling up it's just getting it's just trying to decide what its next move will be Uh, and this is uh, Axon Enterprise, and this is a bit different one. I said I'd put one or two in that might be different that maybe you hadn't thought of or you hadn't considered, um, but it's one that I'd kind of spoken about back in February, March time and recommended to a few of my uh, own clients. Uh, if anybody here in the room, if you understand who Axon are, if you uh, if you uh, know who they are or if you've got some of their stock, it's, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you uh, want to think who they think they are, uh, kind of chat. You stick that in the chat, okay? It'd be fascinating to see if anybody knew who it was or who had a, a sort of kind of a little buy of them. But uh, I, don't worry, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you to. So, um, Axon Enterprise is the is basically is the is the company that owns the uh, non-lethal weapon system Taser. All right, so I'm sure you might have seen it wherever you are in the world. They're kind of yellow and black guns, okay? That effectively <clears throat> just um, you know you get shot and you get sh get pinged and with an electrical charge, and it uh, it kind of ruins your day if you. Uh, if you get tasered um uh, and uh, you know i'm saying back at the start of the lockdown that you know there, there would be problems there would be problems you know if, if you if you lock your population down there is going to be problems when they reopen it there might be if if it had got really bad you know the problems with looting etc and and actually that's what we saw you know that's what we saw across you know across the globe okay no one was really immune from it there was there was issues of of rioting okay there's issues of looting especially in the u.s but but you know, in many parts of the world, uh, and invariably, what we saw was that uh, we saw that you know there was a demand for tasers. So, uh, so we can see you can see for yourself that you know having taser been at kind of um, uh, just here, just under ninety dollars, it dipped down to fifty 
dollars there okay uh during the crash but from 50 uh it's now up at around about 130 okay it's just uh, it moved up from there okay as as you know as we uh as we exited lockdown okay and you know there was there was riotings and then as the year was gonna and then we had a thoughts of second lockdown second waves that very gave axon another kind of bump up there okay so that is just you know you might not think that that's a very <laughs> pleasant way to to think about it but it is you know as a trader and investor you're trying to understand trends you're trying to understand supply and demand okay it's trying to take a take a look at that and take a view on that and it's invariably a case of you know if, if people are feeling nervous they, they will they will look to basically try and defend um, the, whether it be their properties with people etc and so not unsurprisingly we saw uh, demand for tasers and that has been reflected in the uh, in the share price um there so you know that's just part of kind of message to think about that is as i said a bit earlier is events will occur in your lives events will happen and it's about you being able to maybe think you know what are maybe the second third fourth order of consequences of this main event uh, you know and what will be where will be the supply and demand with that what will be the ideas what would be the thoughts that might be different from other people something that you can actually sort of just you know look and uh and, and back your own ideas and thoughts and so you know taser was was uh, one of mine right at the uh, right at the start of the uh, um of the of the of the the pandemic um, and this is uh, this is another one, and, and this kind of um, this kind of links in a little bit to the uh, you know the, the sort of earlier story um, thing. It's a case of uh, it's a case of you know this is a company called IWG. It, it's a, it, it is a kind of a bit of a global company, but you know many people in the UK would know this as Regis. They are um, kind of a commercial property company. Uh, they also do kind of. Um, um, selling desk space, okay, for you know, for solopreneurs, etc. And uh, I keep it. I kept an eye on this because, um, as I said at the start, my office was at the uh, my office was in a Regis building, part of IWG, and invariably uh, I was just kind of uh, curious to see how they were doing and you know what was what was going on and see once again just keeping your eyes open to what's going on around you and, and looking for those opportunities based upon, you know, what you see, uh, see for yourself. <clears throat> so I, this is weekly chart of IWG and actually you can see for a couple of years there, really, it was just really going nowhere between about 200 pence and 340 pence. Uh, and then we had, you know, a bit of a breakout and a push to the North before really dropping. You know, we were up here at 460 uh, and we're down to a pound. Okay. I mean, that's just a collapse, an absolute collapse there. You know, okay. And share price, you know, you're, you're looking at like a 70 odd percent, 80 percent, you know, drop in share price there. Okay. Because the commercial property market, as I said, to start just evaporated almost overnight because, you know, uh, either uh, nobody knew is going to be taking on office space people who are going to be in offices are going to be like me closing them up and going home okay so suddenly overnight their revenues were collapsing but their overheads in terms of you know their, their costs are there you know who they were renting office space off they were still there okay so it was effectively you know the kind of business was just undermined uh, and you can see that you know what we had here is we had a few grants okay that kept us going and you know and, and you know prices prices rallied back to about 340 but I, you know i, I I think that's more of a case of that's just being dragged up by markets being dragged up in general okay you know the question is if you know if you're a, if you're a company now knowing what you know now about how people can work from home how a lot of people prefer to work from home you know uh, would you as a company would you be spending a lot of money on buying you know managed office space you know would you be would that be something you're doing or would you be basically just effectively downsizing what you have and just people working i don't know one day a week from an office rather than the full time okay so that has a that has all these things has that knock on impact that you're uh, that you're looking to take uh, looking to take on board okay and as i said it's these thinking at these next levels of, of right what were the opportunities here okay so um um we can do we you know we can have a look at that okay Uh, and, and then we, you know, we had a couple of the big winners. Okay, so uh, one of them was uh, Zoom. Okay, Zoom Video Communications. We've you know, been on here. Okay, and, you know this this particular event is on Zoom. Okay, uh, a, a Chinese a video conferencing company. Okay, uh, and you can see for yourself that actually, you know, from its from its inception, it's open. Okay. Um, it, you know, it just really bounced around. Okay, in, in a kind of a bit of a range, but boom okay as 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 regis as business which we've just looked at was collapsing because offices were closing everyone was going home this was providing a fantastic opportunity for zoom okay everybody's gone home 
and everybody's been working on Zoom. Okay, um, whether you have been, whether you've been using it every day for work, you know, like uh, sessions like this, uh, maybe you've just been using it opportunity to keep in touch with friends and family. Okay, right, Liron? people have been using that where possible. And you know, there, there are other uh, video conferencing um, uh, products and services available, but this is the the kind of main one that we have seen operating throughout. Um, uh, throughout the pandemic and you can see for yourself there okay you can see for yourself there so you know from from being at you know what was effectively a kind of you know around about sort of a hundred dollars um, you know we, we rallied all the way up to just underneath six hundred dollars okay uh, and we, we had a little bit of a, a fall back there as you know as a, a, you know as effectively as, as the vaccine came out okay and people think oh we're going to go back to offices but there will still be an element of those as we're having numbers increasing as we have second waves as we see the kind of some that some of the timelines for some of the um, vaccines, you know, just edge out a little bit longer. Well, invariably, people recognise that you know they, they, they're going to be still be working from home, and, and also just as I said, companies identifying how they want to do. You know, why would a company spend a lot of money on uh, an expensive uh, office space uh, when they can sit at people at home and, and, and work from uh, and work from uh, home on on Zoom? So that had a huge impact there. Okay, on the on the the share price for Zoom and. Um, you know, once again, if we look at how will that impact in 2021? Well, I think that that's going to effectively, that's going to effectively, we, we, I will watch us, you know, hang around, meander around 500. And I think that actually, as we, as we see the, uh, as we see the kind of uh, an element of return to life, we, we will see a kind of a drift down. Personally, I think we will see a drift down in Zoom just because the the intensity of using the, 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 a lot of people using it, the new subscribers will, will effectively will, uh, will have drifted away because uh, people will be you know, going back into other uh, office spaces. Uh, and you know, here's another one we mentioned here. Okay, so TV streaming system Netflix. Okay, and um, you know, Netflix is a curious one because it, it it's you know it has huge revenues, but uh, you know it's if you look into the actual fundamentals of it, it's um, it's kind of an interesting one. And as I said, I don't consider myself an equity specialist, but um, it, it's you know it's not unsurprisingly that we had the share price going from like two sixty to around about three eighty in the run up. It dropped down to just under 300, around about 290. And then you can see for yourself, okay, it, uh, it charged its way up to 580. Once again, not really a surprise, okay? People are locked down at home. What they're going to do, they're going to want to watch TV or they're going to want to entertain their children who weren't at school where they're trying to work, okay? So if Netflix is a screaming subscription of one of the few of them, well, that has actually helped them enormously, hasn't it? And you can see for yourself what's brought there. But but just look at that share price there. And just look at the price action there. You know, some people might see that as you know, poor. Well, maybe that's maybe that's a bit of a triple top. Maybe you might think it's a double top. And um, I'd say there's definitely kind of like there's kind of a level of support there around about 480. Uh, and you'd be looking at, I'd be looking at see, well, what's going to happen there? Okay. Is it a case of, you know, is the 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 the, the vaccine going to come thick and fast and get people out, in which case I think Netflix price will uh, drop. Or will there be a case of, you know, the vaccine is slower or it's not as great as everybody's saying it is and the other numbers go up and actually, you know, we, we see people going back into lockdown, okay? So it's, uh, in which case, that will give the Netflix price. This is very much all sentiment driven, all right? It's all very sentiment driven and that can change. That's the one of the challenges is that can change like that based upon either great news on the vaccine side or terrible news on, on numbers of, uh, of cases and deaths. Uh, and this is the other one I was talking about, Peloton, all right? You know, it's the kind of, this was a uh, great, the, you know, the, the, this is, uh, this is as I said, these are all about sentiment, okay? And, and what's curious to me and interesting to me is that, you know, Peloton, it's, it's, it's basically a stationary bike with a, with an iPad that gives you a Wi-Fi connection to be able to do your online spinning classes, okay? <clears throat> Not particularly cheap, you know, but, um, you know, for what it is, but, uh, and invariably they were struggling. They weren't doing as great as they hope, but you can see for yourself, all right? You know, if you if you lock people up at home for, for months on end, well then invariably, you know, um, they're gonna want to work, they're gonna wanna do something uh, and you can see for yourself what happened, okay? You know, we, we basically drifted down to just beneath 20. The next thing we're up to, up to 50, pulled back and you see how we kind of came back, retested the breakout uh, and then from 40 up to Bosch 140 there. Okay. That is actually fantastic there, you know, but you can see for yourself, the price is coming down and, 
I personally don't see it getting any higher myself. Okay, I I, I think people who will have wanted Peloton have bought one through the uh, through the lockdown. If you look at their adverts, their adverts are changing. Okay, it's now they're now going to like a, a monthly model instead of a buying outright the bike. And that'll be a change of it. Uh, and so all of that kind of stuff adds up to the kind of story that maybe you know this has been a fantastic runner and a great winner from lockdown. But longer term, I'm not. I'm not entirely convinced that you know we, we will see we will see more surges in the price on Peloton. Okay, I think that's um, that's had its it's had its it's had its day in the sun. Okay, and uh, and has and has done very well. And if you've traded that, well, you know, fair play to you. But I, I you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be expecting it to 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 go you know to go much more. So um, just to you know just to sort of give you some. Um, uh, Ronald says he just walks up and down the stairs at home. Uh, you're absolutely right, Ronald. All right, that's um, it's a lot cheaper, isn't it? Uh, it's a lot cheaper than the, I think it's about two thousand dollars or so for the for the Peloton and stuff. But clearly, lots of people did buy them. Um, so yeah, but that uh, but you're right though in terms of you know um, you know what you could have done um, with that money. But um, just uh, just to show that you know actually I'm not just doing all of this in hindsight. So you know I I used to run a daily session at, at sort of February and March. Of, uh, of this year just giving trying to help people make sense of what madness was going on there okay and, and i you know and, and i put that and I, it's on my blog there fx trader paul uh you know and I, and I put a blog on there and kind of from the 2nd of april talking about what we talked about is the covid trade uh, and that idea was going long zoom the video communication uh, and at the same time short iwg as a kind of perfect covid trade short and commercial property buying video communications uh, and you know and it was it was a very uh, it was a very handsome trade okay um, but also a, a bit of a sign of the future we can expect right because i think even with the vaccine I, I think it's going to take 12 to 18 months for for the world to, to edge its way back to its uh, to its old self if if ever and it could take somewhere between three to eight years for 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 markets and economies and sectors to to, to, rec to recover and, and maybe one or two of them never never will okay and what is going to happen is that new ways of working are going to emerge we've seen that okay you know companies have realized that people can work from home okay and the question is, you know, why would you want to spend lots on, on you know, big offices, expensive offices, if people are happy to work from home and they have the, the tech devices to be able to do that? And I think that will change and, and that will be that will be a, a theme to watch throughout 2021. OK, I think there will be a reaction, OK, because after being locked down, people want to go out and do old world stuff. But I think in terms of working and in terms of tech, th 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 there will be there will be, you know, a, a drift towards a kind of a, a new way of looking at it. What this has also shown is a case is uh, effectively um, a little bit of a, a, an interest in the case in that you know we've seen this as it's been used as a uh, 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 an opportunity. Uh, I think the slogan is to build back better, okay, which has kind of become a ubiquitous slogan across throughout institutions and corporations, and and the pushing of a you know a, of a kind of a, a climate change agreement and and a kind of an anti carbon sort of uh, uh, emphasis. And of course, very, I think that will have a knock on effect. Hence, why we've seen Tesla share price do well despite people not really buying cars in the same way that they were before um, before the pandemic hit us. So um, I think uh, we have uh, uh, Diliana says, what do you think about the upcoming IPO of Airbnb? Uh, well, you know, I, I can't offer specific uh, investment advice. That's not the that's not the way we, we work here. But, you know, it, it's a little bit like what I just said earlier there before Diliana. It's, it's about thinking, you know, what are the consequences of these kind of events? You know, Airbnb were absolutely slaughtered, OK, as part of the uh, pandemic, because invariably their business, their business, you know, just um, just fell away. And also property companies who were using Airbnb as a way to, to, to sort of a, a variation of tourism, they were also hit terribly as well. So uh, my own view is that, you know, that Airbnb, that will take some time, okay? They will take some time to come back, okay? Because I think there will be some people who are desperate to travel for a holiday, but a lot of people will be now wary, okay? A lot of people will change the way they 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 look at uh, um, at uh, moving and operating. So, you know, you just keep, a, keep, an, eye on, uh, uh, keep an eye on that. So, um, so ladies and gentlemen, you know, in conclusion, you're right. You know, as, as, as I'm sure you know yourself, stock markets in 2020 provided traders investors with a, with a bit of a wild ride. Okay, and, and it might not necessarily be done. We've still got a couple of weeks left, as I say this. Uh, particular sectors like aviation, automobiles, real estate, and retail were hit were hit very hard. Hit very hard indeed. Uh, and stocks with an online presence benefited strongly from that lockdown. Okay, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine has played a 
big difference in the rotation strategies employed by institutions over the last few years weeks okay and that's what we have seen that has kind of skewed the kind of numbers some of those stay-at-home stocks will continue to to strengthen okay so you know there will be you know i think the online retailers i buy okay will you know continue to do well but there will be some companies like i think as i said like peloton who i think you know they have done well they have had their their uh, time in the sun and and they will invariably that will kind of degrade going uh, going forward and i said many will pause or um roll over uh, and uh, Dillian is asking again. You know, do you think the stock market will go down by forty percent again? As some speculate, say the crisis is doubly shape, and I yet see the second downturn. Um, I, I think there is going to be there is going to be some. I think twenty twenty one is going to be another wild ride. Okay, that's what my view would be. Um, I, I think there is going to be there, there will be there, there is going to be knock on effects as countries regions come out of lockdown and we start to see the real economic impact on businesses and that is going to provide a bit of a wild ride for 2021 and a lot of that will be sentiment driven and, a, and an element of fundamentals so you know my case would be is that you know um, if you think 2021 is now good, it's going to be a year of, of, of peace and quiet um, that that is unlikely I think there will be there will be more of a wild ride next year to, to, to come. And as I said, it's up to you to decide whether that is a threat or an opportunity. And hopefully these sessions try to just give you a little bit of the, of the way of thinking. But, um, you know, we're running out of time, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, you know, as we said, you know, if uh, uh, don't forget to join us on Wednesday, where you'll hear my colleague talk about trading with a stochastic oscillator, naming what is a stochastic what does the stochastic oscillator tell you? You know, examples of how to use the stochastic oscillator. Uh, and that will be on Wednesday, December the 9th, 2 p.m. London time. Check your inbox for the webinar link or head over to the website uh, to register for the live webinars. Uh, as always, you'll find lots of analysis and education resources on the admiralmarkets.com website, should you wish to avail yourself of it. And if you wish to contact us, you can do so. Email hello at admiralmarkets.com. Uh, on, uh, you can watch this video and all the other Trading Spotlight webinar videos on youtube.com forward slash admiralmarkets or on facebook.com forward slash admiralmarketsglobal. So um, uh, I hope you found that uh, useful, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, we've already overrun a little bit. I appreciate this is kind of a, you know, it's an interesting topic. And, you know, as I said, we could talk about it for uh, for, for days, okay? But um, the reality is that it's, uh, um, we only had a, a 40, 45 minute slot. So um, I, I hope you found that useful. I hope it's giving you just maybe even for some new to it, it's giving you a little bit of insight as to how it's happened and also to think about when events like this occur, you know, how to think about, well, you know, what is the real common sense of who, you know, where is the supply and demand going how does that have an impact upon particular sectors and stocks you know and, and is it possible for you to sort of identify and start to build a little bit of a, a trading and investment plan that actually you know helps you go through these kind of events um with that as i said i, I don't think 2021 is going to be a, a a calm and peaceful year i think there will be more shocks to, to come in, in in ways we may not even understand or know now but as always i, I wish you the, the best of success in your own trading investing i uh, uh, hope you have a fantastic week uh, and i look forward to seeing you uh, next monday for the for the next uh, installment on the admiral markets trading spotlight webinar series trade well everybody thanks <laughs>